Good day, people of God. It's Pastor Jeremiah, also known as Pastor Loic. We'd like to hear the word of God for the week. But before we do so, let us say a word of prayer. So in reverence to our Heavenly Father, our God, let us bow our head and let us pray. Abba Father, blessed God, glorious and wonderful God, King of kings, Lord of lords, you who never change, the only true God, the everlasting God, the almighty God. We thank you. We give you all the honor and praise for ever and ever. Thank you for giving us once more the opportunity to be found in your presence. Thank you for what you have in store for us. Thank you for what you have prepared for us. We pray and we surrender the air, the atmosphere, the heaven above us and around us and in us. In your hands, take control of everything. And we stand and take authority against anything that exalts itself against the knowledge of the truth. Anything that opposes itself against the knowledge of your word, for your word is the truth. We bind them and cast them into the pit of hell in the name of Jesus Christ. And we decree that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Thank you for everything. Thank you for imparting understanding knowledge. Take us deeper into the revelation of your mysteries. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. So, today we want to take our scripture from the book of Luke, chapter 11, verse 21 to 22. So, we're reading the word of God in the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 22. Uh, Luke chapter 11, verse 21 to verse 22. So, reading the word of God in the book of Luke chapter 11, verse 21 to 22, in the name of Jesus Christ. When a strong man arm keeps his palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he shall come upon him and overcome him, he takes from him all his armor wherein he trusted and divides his paws. May the Lord bless his word, may it come full of understanding, revelation, blessing, grace, and life in the name of Jesus Christ. So today the Lord wants to speak to us about deliverance. So we speak about deliverance. In our main passage of the Holy Scripture that we just read, when it comes to spiritual matters, there is what is called a strong man. A strong man in spiritual terminology is a spiritual entity who controls the life of a person. The person can only be and do what the strong man allows him to be or do. It is like a car which is controlled by a yoke. The car is ordered to go in whichever direction the person who controls the yoke wants it to go. This is why Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 to 30 saying, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In this passage of the scripture, Jesus Christ was intuitively referring to deliverance because such a person is abused spiritually by a strong man controlling his life. And that is actually a demonic spiritual entity that is draining down the, the persons with several problems in his life. Hence, the person cannot progress in his life the way God has called him to evolve. Hence, Jesus Christ is calling everyone who is being controlled by any demonic spiritual entity to come unto him to receive true deliverance by making a solemn 
meaning a sincere and firm decision to renounce this strong demonic spiritual entity and to make Jesus Christ the strong man of his life for the yoke of Jesus Christ is easy and his burden is light. Many people make the mistake to come to God only with the intent of resolving their problem, but they do not want to follow the way of the ways of God. They do not want to make Jesus Christ the strong man of their life by truly accepting Jesus Christ not only as the Savior, but also as the Lord. And this was the case in the verses that follow our main passage of the Holy Scriptures. In Luke chapter 11, verse 24 to 26, which says, this is Jesus speaking again, when the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walks through dry places, seeking rest and finding none, he says, I will return unto my house whence I came out. And when he comes, he finds it swept and garnished then goes he and takes to him seven other spirits more wicked than himself and they enter in and dwell there and the last state of that man is worse than the first in this passage the man receive his deliverance but he made the mistake of not making jesus christ the lord of his life and as a result the Spirit of God was not indwelling the life of the, of the man. In other terms, Jesus Christ was not the strong man in the life of the, of the person. Because when you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord, your body becomes the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit. Even as the Word of God declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19, which says, What? Know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, in other words, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own. And because the man did not make Jesus Christ his Savior and Lord, his life was therefore empty of the presence of God. This is why the unclean spirit, in other words, the demon, was able to return and possess the man. But this time, the demon did not come alone, but he made agreement, in other words, covenant, with more wicked, in other words, stronger, demons or superior demons than himself and as a result the life of the man had has become worse than what it was before he had received his deliverance that is why it is not only enough for a person to receive his deliverance but it is even more important to keep your deliverance because if you fail to do so your life will become worse than before. And the only way for you to preserve your deliverance is to make Jesus Christ the strong man of your life by accepting Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord. This means that you need to live a life of holiness by living in obedience to the Word of God. Deliverance is the process of getting free from spiritual prisons spiritual bondages, limitation, and hindrances. Meaning being free from anything that may hinder you from progressing in life. These troubles may be caused either by you due to offenses to God's law or principles, or by illegal abuses of powers of darkness, or by illegal abuses of members of your family who have spiritual authority over your life, such as your father, your biological father, or your biological mother. Illustrations, for instance, in, nation, in a nation, laws are set. If someone breaks the law, he can be sent to prison or someone may be falsely accused and as a result go to prison that's an abuse 
or the president of the country or the governor can make an abuse of his power or authority to put someone in prison. In the same manner, God the creator of everything, according to Genesis chapter 1, and he is, God is the creator of everything, and he is the one who set laws and principles to regulate the entire creation. And the book of Psalm declares in Psalm 1 verse 1 to 2, saying, Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law does he meditate day and night. These laws of God or principles of God are spiritual because God is spirit, even as John chapter 4 verse 24 says. But though they are spiritual, they also regulate the physical realm. Romans chapter 7 verse 14 says, For we know that the law is spiritual, the first part of the verse. Hence, the spiritual realm drives the physical realm. If someone therefore breaks the commandment of God, he may find himself in a spiritual prison. This is why Jesus Christ said in John chapter 8 verse 34, saying, Jesus answered them, Very, very, I say unto you, Whosoever commits sin, he is the servant of sin. In other words, he is the slave of sin. Some types of offenses to God's law or, and principles and illegal abuses. For instance, breaking one of the commandments of God, one of the Ten Commandments of God, found in Exodus chapter 20, verse 1 to 18, or going or touching certain properties without God's permission. This can be a place, items, people, and so a curse said over someone by either, either by his father or by his mother biological father biological mother they have spiritual they are spiritual legal authority over the child so they can say something over a child spelled by witches or sorcerer or magician is an abuse of power or laying hands on someone by human agents of the kingdom of darkness who pretend to be men or women of God. That is why it's very important for people before joining churches to always seek direction from God, to always ask God to lead them in the congregation that God want them to be planted, that God want them to work or operate or have fellowship. Because if they are in a wrong congregation, meaning if they, the leader of the congregation is an agent of darkness, that person will end up being demon possessed. The people fellowshipping in that congregation will be demon possessed. Because the agent, the human agent of darkness leading the congregation will bewitch them, will throw demons to manipulate them, to, to abuse them spiritually. The remedies for general cases, for instance, if someone has broken God's law or principles, he must first of all repent confessing his sins and asking God to forgive him and cleanse him with the blood of Jesus. For the word of God says that it is the blood of Jesus that was shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. And he adds that without blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. That's why Jesus Christ was wounded and his blood was shed so that our sins be forgiven. Then the person must take authority 
in the name of Jesus Christ and commanded all the demons affecting his life to go and release his life in the name of Jesus Christ. It is important for that person to be born again for his spiritual authority over Satan and de demons and all the powers of darkness to be established or restored in the name of Jesus Christ. If someone is illegally spiritually abused by the powers of darkness, by the forces of darkness, he must simply take authority in the name of Jesus Christ and by the power given to him by Jesus Christ, if he's born again, he must release himself in prayer, commanding these demons to go and live his life in the name of Jesus Christ. And they will obey. He must believe. Because without faith, you cannot receive the things of God. For the Bible says the just shall live by faith. And the Bible says that a person who doubts is unstable in all his way and he cannot expect to receive anything from God. There are three main ways or doors that can lead to a direct demonic possession. The first main door of demonic possession is the door of spiritual inheritance. And this is described in the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 20 verse 4 to 6. You shall not make unto you any graven image or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water underneath under the, the earth. You shall not bow down yourself to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. This is God speaking through Moses to the people of Israel, giving the Ten Commandments. The spiritual inheritance refers to spiritual bondage, spiritual baggages, sorry. Spiritual inheritance refers to spiritual baggage or belonging or possession that are passed from one generation to another generation in a particular family. God said that he will punish the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation. This means that sins committed by a person may cause someone to be possessed by demons. And these demons will have the legal spiritual right to extend their control in the family lineage of the person by also spiritually possessing descendants of the person until the fourth generation. Unless someone in the family lineage will repent of the sin that gave to these demons legal spiritual access to possess the family lineage. And thereafter, the person will break the yoke of this demon through intensive prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. And the same principle also applies for a family curse because beyond behind every curse there is a demon that is or a spiritual demonic entity that is overseeing the curse to enforce it over the family or over the person a person can discern that there are demons of spiritual inheritance operating in his family lineage when he sees that the same evil that is happening to him also happened to his father or his mother 
or to any of his grandparents and so on or it is happening to any of his own children by seeing such pattern he needs to discern that there is a demonic entity that is operating in a family lineage and he needs to seek the face of God to find out what gave legal access to that demonic entity or those demonic entities to gain control over the family and perpetrate that evil in the family so that he can repent from that sin that was committed so that they may lose what gives them the legal right over the family and thereafter he can command them to live and they will live in the name of Jesus and this is where the spiritual umbilical cord applies for it is the same way the same when a child is born physically the umbilical cord will be cut to separate the child from his biological mother the same is true spiritually when a child is born physically it is important for the parent of the child to pray for the child to be to cut the spiritual umbilical cord that connects the child to the sins of his parents and his and his family lineage and this is why God spoke to the people of Israel through the prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 16 verse 3 to 4 which says and say thus says the Lord God unto Jerusalem your birth and your nativity is of the land of Canaan your father was an Amorite and your mother an Hittite and as for your nativity in the day you were born, your navel was not cut. Neither was you, were you washed in water to supple you, that you were not salted at all, nor saddled, swaddled at all. Another main door that demons can use to possess a person is the sin of idolatry that is committed by the person because beyond any act of idolatry there is a demonic entity that is being worshipped even as the word of God declares in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 19 to 21 which says what say I then that the idol is anything or that which is offered in sacrifice to idols is anything but I say that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to devil, devils, in other words, demons, and not to God. And I will know that you will that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils, in other words, the cup of demons. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and the table of devils. This implies that any form of idolatry. Can lead to a direct demonic possession of the person performing such an act of act, such act of act, idolatry, and this includes, for instance, when a child is dedicated to ancestors or to any spirit, and so on. When someone go, when someone goes to consult a witch doctor, for instance, or when he goes to consult card, read, card or poem readers, when someone participates to a traditional ceremony where any form of worship which is addressed to a fo that, that is addressed to a false god, this can lead to direct demonic possession and many other ways, form of idolatry, even images that people, uh, friends, photos that people buy in their home those things sometimes they represent demonic entities and they can cause a demon to operate in the house and possess people in the house people wearing for instance artificial hair 
or artificial nails. These things are most of them coming from the under the 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 the, 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 the water world, the underworld, the world of of the sea under 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 the sea. They're coming from man-made spirit, and therefore people wearing those things can easily be directly bewitched to a demonic process demonically process because those evil spirits will come and claim their belongings and because the person wears them so they will claim the life of the person so it gives them legal access to the life of the person This implies that any form of idolatry can lead to a direct demonic possession of the person performing such an act of idolatry. And this includes, for instance, when a child is dedicated to, for instance, totem. Represent that it represents the 